Hey everyone, this is Paul. Hope you're doing well. Uh, I'm gonna be doing another video here exposing the local church's cult uh, with Witness Lee, Watchman Nee. Um, and uh, I just wanted to say right off the bat, uh, just so people know, uh, I, it's been a while since I've done any videos exposing uh, the, the Witness Lee cult. And uh, the reason for that is, is mainly because, um, you know, I really only have uh, maybe just a handful of other topics that I'd like to address, but I feel that overall um, I've covered most of the main points that have needed to be addressed in my previous videos. So, uh, you know, I, I don't, I'm not running a YouTube channel uh, to just continually post videos every, every day or every week, you know, just beating a, beating a dead horse, as they say. Uh, I'm not, I'm not here to do that. I could, if I wanted to, I could nitpick about every single tiny little, uh, detail and thing that's messed up in that group. Uh, but that's, you know, that's not what I want to do. You know, I myself, uh, personally, I have moved on, uh, long ago, long ago, even before I started uh, doing these videos in May of uh, 2019. I'd already moved on, but the Lord called me. I, I still remember the day that the Lord called me uh, to do these videos. And it's been a wonderful journey. Uh, but again, I, I do feel like I have covered uh, most of the things that needed to be addressed. But I still do have, you know, just a few, just a handful of topics that I think I'd still like to bring out. And this here is one of them. It has been on my heart for a while. And so the, the topic that I'm going to be addressing with regards to the local church's cult is the matter of idolatry. And, uh, you know, one of the most fundamental errors, sins, of the local church's cult is that they are, by nature, by the nature of the cult, they are idolaters. That is, they are by nature involved in idolatry every day. Uh, so the members of the local church's cult are idolaters. And I know that there are, you know, many people who would scoff at such a, a claim or, as they would say, an accusation. And uh, they would immediately respond with something like, you know, uh, well, uh, where in the local churches do we worship idols? Or, you know, what idol do we worship? Have you ever seen us bowing down to an idol? You know, and so here is a misconception uh, that we need to address right off the bat. And, and because when idolatry is mentioned, what often comes to mind is someone bowing down to a statue or, you know, some kind of image to worship it, right? Uh, and, and that surely is idolatry. Uh, but we need to understand that idolatry is not limited to bowing down to a statue uh, or some kind, of, um, some kind of painting or image. Okay, idolatry can be committed, it can be performed in many ways. So it's not limited to literally bowing down to something. And so to prove my point real quick is to, let's just get down to the basics. Uh, let's look at the very definition of what idolatry is. So for example, this is a, a definition from Merriam-Webster's dictionary. Uh, the, I defini the definition of an idol is an object of extreme worship. Okay, that is a very concise, very exact definition. It is an object, not just of devotion, but an ob object of extreme devotion. And then this is another definition that I really liked. This is from uh, 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 dictionary.com. Listen to this definition of what an idol is. An idol is any person or thing regarded with blind admiration, adoration, or devotion. I really like that. So you have an idol is an, something that is uh, an object of extreme devotion, and then it's something, a person or a thing that is uh, regarded with what? Blind. Blind. It actually says that. Blind admiration. Adoration 
or devotion. So we got to realize that idolatry is not limited to bowing down to a statue, an image. It can be an, an object of extreme devotion. Okay? It can be a person or thing that is regarded with blind admiration, adoration, or devotion. And that is why in the United States, um, this is just a, you know, an example that I think a lot of people could relate to. In the United States, uh, we have a sh very popular TV show called American Idol. And on that TV show, no one is bowing down to uh, people. Okay? It is a show about talented singers, you know, uh, singing pop songs. And no one is bowing down to anyone on American Idol. But there is extreme devotion, uh, you know, happening uh, with the fans of the singers. And so it, it is rightly called American Idol. These singers, talented people are being idolized. And many people who have extreme devotion, uh, you know, and admiration for, you know, let's say sports stars, for athletes or musicians and singers, you know, they will often say that uh, such and such person was my idol. You know, they'll name a, a sports star or a musician or a band. Oh, yeah, they're my idol. That is a common saying. And are they bowing down to the, the athlete or the musician? No. Uh, are they bowing down to the singer? No. But idolatry is still being committed. And uh, so this is just something that we have to realize that idolatry is not limited to bowing down to things literally, okay? So it is the same in the local church's cult. I have never witnessed anyone in that cult bowing down to Witness Lee or any of his you know, obsequious sycophant um, co-workers, you know, uh, any of his, uh, Witness Lee's predecessors. I've never seen anybody bow down to them and worship them. Uh, but the cult is nevertheless absolutely rife with idolatry. And there is indeed an extreme devotion to Witness Lee and Watchman Dee and the cult. There is indeed a blind admiration, adoration, and devotion to these two men. And, uh, you know, in a sense, I've already kind of already covered this topic in a sense in the first few videos that I did back in May of 2019 uh, because uh, I was referring back then to the cult members as what is called obsequious sycophants. And don't get me wrong, the cult members surely are obsequious sycophants. Uh, but as time has gone on, and as I have gained more insight, you know, just grown more in knowledge, in the knowledge and grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, I have come to realize that the people in the local church's cult are not just obsequious. And they're not just sycophants. So as bad as that is, they're not just that. Uh, they are not only, I, they're not only obsequious, they're not only sycophants, they are actually idolaters. They are full of idolatry. And who are their idols? Witness Lee and Watchman Nee. Okay, two Chinese guys. It's ridiculous. But they have been propped up, set up, uh, you know, with their approval as well, back when they were alive, you know, they've been set up as idols. They're idolized, 100%. Their extreme devotion, the cult's extreme devotion to uh, Witness Lee and Watchman Nee, their blind admiration, and adoration and devotion to them, it is straight up idolatry. It is a great, great sin. I have to emphasize this before I forget, this is a great and terrible sin. I mean, look at Exodus chapter 20. When God gave his people the Ten Commandments, idolatry was number two on the list. It's that bad. First one was having no other gods. The second one is idolatry. It's number two, okay? Very great and terrible sin. This is no small matter. Idolatry is extremely serious in God's eyes. And we have to guard ourselves from idols, as the last verse in 1 John 5 says. And listen to Revelation chapter 21, verse 8, second to the last chapter in the Bible. It says, but the fearful and the unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers 
and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So all idolaters are doomed to the lake of fire. Not just hell, but then afterwards the lake of fire, which is even worse. And there is a sister verse to this uh, in the following chapter, Revelation 22, which is the last chapter of the Bible. Again, warning, uh, saying that, uh, and this is Revelation 22, 15, that says that all idolaters, they will be outside of God's kingdom. They have no way to be in God's kingdom. So this is a great and terrible sin. And I want to bring this up to bring up the severity of this issue. This is not a light matter. This is not some little technicality or factoid. This is a big, big deal. And a lot of people who are going to see this need to wake up to this fact. But before I go on, and this is just kind of a little sidebar, uh, I'm going to get into the proofs of the of how these people are idolaters. But before I go on, just a sidebar, you know, one of the sickest parts of this deceptive, wicked cult is that the new members, the new recruits of this cult, as they are being groomed and, you know, uh, inoculated. Yes, the cult inoculates their new members. See previous videos for that. Uh, as they are being love-bombed, coddled, and spoon-fed all kinds of nice, happy-sounding teachings that tickle the ears of the flesh, uh, almost none of these new recruits have uh, any understanding of what they're getting themselves into. You know, hardly any of them realize that they are slowly but surely uh, entering into a cult with a very rigid system that elevates a couple of Chinese guys to the level and status of God. No wonder these people actually teach that they're becoming gods because Watchman Nee and, and Witness Lee acted like they were gods. They allowed themselves to become people's idols and they promoted it. They wanted them. They were evil, evil, evil men. So these, these new recruits of the cult, they don't realize that they're being sucked into a system that idolizes Witness Lee and Watchman Nee, but that is actually what is happening. And the subtlety and the deception of this cult is so, so strong. They are so sneaky. And that is the reason why the deception is so strong and the cult is so sneaky the reason for that is, is because most of the time, Witness Lee and Watchman Nee are hardly and purposefully, they're, they're never mentioned, hardly ever mentioned. And it's all on purpose. They're hardly ever mentioned to the new recruits. Why? It's to keep the alarming level of idolatry a secret until they gain the new recruits' trust. Why are they keeping these things secret? Because they want to keep the alarming level, the strange and abnormally alarming level of idolatry. They've got to keep it on the down low. They've got to keep it a secret because it's so obvious. Can you imagine? Can you imagine telling college students, uh, you know, and high schoolers right off the bat, every time they do a reading with you, every printout you give them and all the insight you know, the insight that the campus workers have, you know, seem to have regarding Bible interpretation. Can you imagine that every time a reading is done or a printout is handed out, every time these college work, these campus workers share something with the new recruits, can you imagine if the students were told the source of these things every time, that every single interpretation that they're being told is from Witness Lee and Watchman Nee, Everything that they are hearing is coming from one guy or, or you know, uh, two guys. It would be too obvious for most people. The warning, the, war, the, the red flags, the warning bells would be going off the chart for most people. So the cult purposefully has to hide their idols. These men, Witness Lee and Watchman Nee, they have to hide them from their new ones until... The cult, the, the, you know, the cult members have softened up the new recruits and put their fears 
and their suspicions at ease with all kinds of uh, you know, reassuring words about how wonderful Witness Lee and Watchman Nee are. But the level of idolatry in the cult is so obvious and it is so shameful. It is so shameful that they have to hide it as if they were ashamed of it. They have to hide it from the new people who may still have a few ounces of common sense and dignity and integrity. But these local church cult members have no dignity and no integrity. That's why they hide behind different names on college campuses. That's why they, they hide behind different aliases on college campuses to deceive new recruits, to trick them, to hide their idols. Because these people have, are shameful. They have no dignity, no integrity. They are dishonest, opaque, deceptive, non-transparent cult members. So they are hiding their idols, Watchman Nee and Witness Lee, from the public as they prey on young people, stealing them away from God and from their families. That is shameful. These cult, these cult members have no integrity, no dignity. They are shameful. And they are obviously ashamed of their idols. They have to hide their idols. They're so ashamed of it. What a joke. But anyway, here is the proof. Here is the proof of the idolatry in the local church's cult. It's not a bowing down to Witness Lee and Watchman Nee, but it is an extreme, extreme devotion. Extreme devotion. And a blind admiration, adoration, and devotion to these men who schemed all of this. So the proof, what is the proof of the idolatry? Well, it's not one point, okay? It's many. It's many points, and it all adds up. It all adds up to a very clear and solid proof of their wicked idolatry, elevating these men, Witness Lee and Watchman Nee, to the status and level of God. So here's the proof. Number one. Witness Lee, and I've covered a lot of these points before, but I have to emphasize them again to get these points across that people will understand that the local church cult members are not brothers and sisters. They are not Christians. They are cult members on their way to hell. They are idolaters, flat out idolaters. They are not your brothers and sisters. You don't need to treat them as such. They are not the body of Christ. They are not the church of Christ. They are idolaters who are trapped in a cult, okay? And so you need to understand these points to realize this. Otherwise, you're gonna think that uh, they're your brothers and sisters and they're just good-hearted people with no problems. They're just a little tricked. No, they are idolaters. They are unrighteous people with no integrity, no dignity, shameful people hiding their idols, deceiving people on their way to hell. So point number one, Witness Lee had his own Bible. It's called the Recovery Version Bible, compiled with thousands upon thousands upon thousands. There's over 10,000 footnotes just in his New Testament alone, not counting the Old Testament. So Witness Lee had his own Bible version called the Recovery Version Bible, full of literally thousands, over 10,000 footnotes. And what is the content of those footnotes? 99.9% .9 of the footnotes are all by Witness Lee. And the cult says that this is the best translation of the Bible, that you need to get it and that you should read it with the footnotes every single day. So what do they want you to do every day of your life? They want you reading their corrupted version of the Bible with Witness Lee's writings. They want you to read Witness Lee every day of your life. That's not extreme devotion, is it? 
Is that extreme to read one man every single day of your life? There's nothing extreme about that, is there? And, and to the people who have come at me with this, don't give me the, well, John MacArthur has a study Bible. John MacArthur has a study Bible, you know, the MacArthur study Bible. He's not a cult. Well, look, first of all, I don't recommend John MacArthur at all. That man said that you can take the mark of the beast and still be saved. Eh, wrong, dead wrong. That guy's a false teacher. I don't recommend John MacArthur at all. But that's still, as bad as he is, he's still not a cult member. And may I remind you that John MacArthur does not say that his Bible, he doesn't presume to say my study Bible is the best Bible and the best translation out there. You have to get it and read it every day. He doesn't say that. Witness Lee does. That's the difference. That's the difference between a false teacher and a cult leader. MacArthur's bad, along with a bunch of other people. But Witness Lee is an actual cult leader saying that his translation is the best. Okay? You have to read him and his writings every day. So that's the difference. So don't, don't give me this, oh, Witness Lee was just like John MacArthur. No. No, as bad as John MacArthur is, Witness Lee was much, much worse. Okay? Point number two. The local church's daily devotional called the Holy Word for Morning Revival is encouraged to be read every single day, every single morning of your life. And what is the content of the Holy Word for Morning Revival? It's all composed of Witness Lee and some of Watchman Nee's writings, mostly Witness Lee, plus a few Bible verses, you know, scattered here and there, uh, that, which are used and twisted to support their heretical and erroneous teachings, of course. So what are the local church's cults supposed to read every single morning of their life? Witness Lee, Watchman Nee. Read their Bible with the footnotes every single day of your life. And every single morning of your life, read more of Witness Lee and Watchman Nee. There's definitely no extreme devotion here, is there? No, no, not at all. Okay, point three. Besides their own version of the Bible and their own daily devotional, Witness Lee, a Watchman Nee, uh, they have hundreds, literally hundreds of ministry books. Besides the Bible, besides these uh, daily devotionals, they've got hundreds of books compiled of their heretical spoken messages. And the co-workers encourage their cult members to read the ministry books every day, as much as you can, as much as possible. So what else are the local church cult members reading every single day? More of Witness Lee, more of Watchman Nee. So there's still no extreme uh, admiration or adoration for these men, is there? Still nothing extreme, right? I mean, you're only reading their Bible with their footnotes every single day and reading their devotional with their writings every single morning and reading their hundreds of books every single day of your life. There's nothing extreme about that, is there? Or is there? Number four, when you attend one of the local church's cult meetings on Sunday mornings, their so-called church meetings, there is always a time for so-called you know, prophesying, where they're supposed to speak forth God's word. And what are they speaking forth? What are the local church members supposed to be talking about? Well, what are they supposed to prophesy about? The Bible? Well, not really, not just the Bible. That's not good enough. The Holy Word for Morning Revival, the daily devotional they have, Witness Lee and Watchman Nee's writings, that is the content of the church meeting. That is the content of their prophesying. Not just the Bible, but mainly the writings of Witness Lee and Watchman Nee. So all of the speaking that is being done in their church meetings is the speaking of the parroting and reciting of Witness Lee and Watchman D. Still no extreme devotion, right? Still no blind admiration or adoration, right? Okay, so hey, point five, what else do the local church cult members do when they're in their uh, cult meetings? Oh, they sing. Oh, these church, these cult members, 
They love to sing, don't they, on oh, the songs. So many of the songs are so happy. And, uh, you know, they've got to sing these happy cult songs to uh, try to lift up, you know, those depressed women that are in the cult. You know, try to lift up, lift up the depressed women out of their sorrow and sadness with all of the abuse and neglect that they have to go through. And they also have to, you know, uplift these frustrated and uh, grumpy, disgruntled brothers, uh, so-called brothers. They have to lift them out of their darkened mind and try to get them in a good mood, right? And uh, what kind of songs are they singing in their church meetings? Witness Lee cult songs, of course. So they have their own hymnal, yes. Uh, LSM, the local church's cult, they have their own hymnal, of course. And, uh, you know, uh, what is sung out of that hymnal? Now, the hymnal does include a lot of songs from uh, Christianity that were written back in, you know, the 1800s and earlier. And, uh, of course, they do that kind of stuff to, uh, you know, seem inclusive and normal to other people so that the cult members can point to their hymnal and say, see, we have songs from other people. But when it, go when it comes to the Lord's table, which they believe is, you know, one of the most important meetings to them, when it comes to their Lord's table meeting, what songs are usually sung? What songs do they sing? It's the, ma the majority of the songs they sing are Witness Lee songs. Songs written by this Chinese guy. Witness Lee, maybe some by Watchman Nee, but it is mostly Witness Lee. So what are they singing in their church meetings? Not only are they speaking Witness Lee's writings, reciting them, prophesying them, they are even singing this guy's songs. His dozens upon dozens upon dozens of songs. So in every meeting, you are hearing Witness Lee in oral form. You're reading it. You're hearing it. They're even singing it over and over and over again. Still, no extreme devotion, huh? Really? Okay, point six. LSM, Living Stream Ministry, the publishing arm of Lee and Nee's writings. Uh, they hold at least seven, seven conferences and trainings every year, at least seven, uh, for the cult members to attend. And can you guess what is the content of these seven conferences and trainings? Of course, it is all Witness Lee and Watchman Nee's writings. That is the content of their trainings and of their conferences. And guess what happens to that content? Guess what happens to the content of these trainings and conferences? They get turned into new devotionals, new daily devotionals, new Holy Word for Morning Revivals. And can you imagine why some of the cult members actually complain about how they hear the same thing over and over and over again? Do you see how this is coming full circle now? Everything is just revolving around Witness Lee and Watchman Nee. Not God, Witness Lee and Watchman Nee. Again, definitely no extreme, uh, a, a blind admiration and adoration, right? Every conference, every training that you go to, Witness Lee. Unbelievable. Point seven, the local church's cult has a two-year Bible school that they encourage all their younger members to go to. And what are they mainly studying at that school? Not the Bible. What they are mainly studying at this so-called Bible school is the writings of Witness Lee and Watchman Nee. They are reading them day and night, studying them, memorizing them, reciting them, taking tests on them, even oral tests where they have to recite the writings. They have to memorize and recite the writings of Witness Lee and Watchman Nee. Not so much the Bible, but the writings of Witness Lee and Watchman Nee. And they call this a Bible school. It is not a Bible school at all. It is an indoctrination brainwashing center. It is sick. I was there. I saw it. It is a joke. The fact that they tell outsiders that this is their Bible school is an absolute joke. So again, nothing extreme about this, is there? No extreme uh, devotion or blind admiration or adoration, is there? Last point that I'll mention, there are more points that I, but I, I could go on and on, but I'll mention this last point. What do the college 
campus workers, you know, and even high school and middle school workers, what do they like to read and share with their young people, you know, that who are under their care all the time? Of course, it's the writings of Witness Lee and Watchman Nee. What else could it be? Witness Lee and Watchman Nee. That's all they get into. That's all they think about. It is a theological personality cult. Not just a theological cult. A personality cult. Terrible. So do you need, I mean, I have more points, but do you need any more proof? Do you need any more solid proof of the sick and idolatrous, abnormal, twisted behavior okay, of extreme devotion and blind admiration and adoration and devotion to these two men, Witness Lee and Watchman Nee? Do you need any more proof? If you still need proof, you're sick in the head. You're not right. You're not normal. You don't know what normal is. You're blind just like them if you still don't get it. And if that offends you, go away, go away. If you're subscribed and that offends you, go away. I don't care, I don't care. I'm not doing this for subscriptions, okay? I'm gonna be doing more videos later on that are gonna be much more offensive than this one. And if I lose subscribers, I don't care, I don't care, okay? What I care about is my responsibility before God to speak the truth, to help people to rebuke those who need to be re rebuked and to help re-educate those who are open to being re-educated. And I myself, by the way, am still in that process. I don't claim to have arrived and come to the full knowledge, okay? I'm still learning. I'm still, he uh, you know, re-educating. Re okay, it takes time. It's a process. But this is all true. These people are idolaters. The examples and the proofs that I'm giving are accurate. That is exactly what is going on in this group. And for anyone who is watching this video, if you're still in the cult, if you're on the fence, I'm speaking to you right now, okay? If you're wondering if you should still stay in the cult or if you should leave, I have two verses for you, okay? This is 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 16. Listen to this, please. It says, in what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? What agreement does the temple of God have with idols? Nothing. No agreement at all. Do you have agreement with idols? Do you put up with idols? Are you involved in idolatry? What agreement hath the temple of God with idols? And then it says, for ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them and I will be their God. And they shall be my people. And the second verse, I've actually already mentioned this one, is 1 John chapter 5, verse 21. An admonition from the Apostle John. His parting words in this epistle. Little children, keep yourselves keep yourselves from idols and then it says amen keep yourselves from idols amen i hope those verses speak to someone because they speak to me they speak to my heart i hope they speak to yours and if you're still in this group please open to what i'm saying and especially to what the bible is saying here because if you're in that group you are involved you are involved in idolatry. And you need to repent and get out. You need to repent in dust and ashes and get right before God and follow Jesus. And if you follow Jesus, this is what I always tell people. If you are truly following Jesus, you will follow him right out of that cult because Jesus is not there. The Holy Ghost is not there. That's why you don't see any works of the Holy Spirit. That's why there's no gifts of the Holy Spirit. That's why there's no dreams or visions or true prophecies or healings from these people. It's not there. God is not among them because it's a cult, okay? And I have to remind people again <clears throat> that God will severely judge all idolaters, 
God's judgment is upon the idolaters and the families who are involved in idolatry. The top leaders of this cult, uh, Witness Lee's predecessors, his co-workers, they are dying off. Andrew Yu, dead. Benson Phillips, who I believe is also from Texas like me, dead, just died, and went to hell. He didn't bring the Lord back, did he? Andrew, you didn't bring the Lord back. More of these co-workers are going to die in their sin and go straight to hell. But if you still have an ear to hear, and if you're still in this cult, while well, there's a chance, you need to take heed and get out. Because more and more, the judgment of God is going to become more and more manifest upon these wicked cult leaders. It's going to become more and more obvious. You watch. You watch. And uh, another thing I wanted to address real quick, 